Firefox versus Internet Explorer. In the early 2000s, Internet Explorer dominated the market with over 90% share, but it was slow, full of security flaws, and rarely updated. Firefox arrived as a faster, safer, and more customizable alternative built by the Mozilla community. Features like tabbed browsing, pop-up blocking, and a massive library of extensions made it a favorite for power users. It wasn't just a browser, it was a statement that the web could be open and user-focused again. As Firefox gained traction, Microsoft was forced to overhaul Internet Explorer, leading to better security and more frequent updates. While Chrome later took the spotlight, Firefox's push broke IE's monopoly and helped shape the modern web experience we take for granted. VLC Media Player versus Windows Media Player For years, people downloaded movies or music only to find Windows Media Player couldn't open them without extra codecs. VLC solved that instantly. If it's a media file, VLC plays it. Built by volunteers, it's lightweight, cross-platform, and completely free. It became the go-to tool for students, travelers, and anyone who didn't want to waste time converting files. VLC wasn't pretty, but it was reliable, opening formats that even paid software wouldn't touch. Over time, it added streaming support, screen recording, and network playback, features you'd expect from commercial products, yet still cost nothing. Its orange traffic cone icon became a quiet symbol of no-nonsense functionality in a world of bloated media players. OBS Studio versus Camtasia. Camtasia is polished, but its high price tag put it out of reach for students, hobbyists, and small creators. OBS Studio, open broadcaster software, stepped in with a free, open source alternative for recording and streaming. It didn't just copy features, it gave users advanced control over scenes, sources, and audio mixing that even even some paid tools lacked. Streamers on Twitch, educators running online classes, and YouTubers creating tutorials adopted it en masse. The community kept adding plugins for everything from virtual cameras to AI-driven captions. OBS didn't just match the competition, it became the backbone of online video production for people who couldn't or wouldn't pay hundreds for software. Notepad++ versus Commercial Text Editors before Notepad, developers often bought text editors with syntax highlighting, search tools, and macros. Notepad offered all of that, and more, completely free. It's lightweight enough to open in a blink, but powerful enough to handle massive log files or complex code bases. With plugin support, customizable shortcuts, and a tabbed interface, it became the Swiss Army knife of text editing. From fixing broken HTML to writing scripts on the fly, it's the kind of tool you don't think about until you're forced to work without it. Many coders still keep it installed even when using full IDEs, because sometimes you just need a fast, no-nonsense editor that gets out of your way. 7-Zip versus WinZip File compression used to mean choosing between paying for WinZip or living with its endless trial-expired pop-ups. Then came 7-Zip, free, fast, and capable of handling formats other tools couldn't. Its own 7Z format often produced smaller files than competitors, saving bandwidth and storage. IT departments embraced it because it could be deployed anywhere without licensing headaches. Over time, it became a quiet staple on millions of PCs, sitting in the right-click menu, ready to zip and unzip without fuss. WinZip still exists, but for most people, 7-Zip made paying for compression software feel unnecessary, and that's a hard advantage to beat. GIMP versus Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is an industry standard, but its subscription model locks out anyone who can't pay. GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, gave photographers, designers, and hobbyists a way to edit images with professional-grade tools for free. While it didn't always match Photoshop's polish, it offered layers, masks, filters, and plug-in support without the monthly bill. In art schools and community workshops, GIMP became the stepping stone for people who later moved into professional design. For freelancers in developing markets, it wasn't just a money saver, it was the only viable way to compete. Even today, GIMP's open plug-in ecosystem lets creators bend it to their needs in ways Adobe's closed system never could. LibreOffice versus Microsoft Office For years, Microsoft Office was treated like the only real choice for documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. Then, LibreOffice came along with a familiar interface, strong compatibility, and a price tag of zero. Schools, nonprofits, and small businesses, especially in developing countries, embraced it because it removed licensing costs entirely. In regions where an annual Office subscription could be half a month's salary, LibreOffice became more than software. It was access to opportunity. While 
While Microsoft leaned into cloud integration and subscription models, LibreOffice kept improving its offline capabilities, ensuring anyone with a basic computer could still work, share, and collaborate. Its success isn't about taking market share, it's about keeping the door open for people who can't pay to enter. WordPress versus Commercial CMS Back when businesses wanted a website, they often paid thousands for a custom content management system. Updates were clunky, customization required developers, and adding new features could take weeks. WordPress changed that by making site creation as simple as installing a theme and adding plugins. From personal blogs to major news sites, it offered flexibility that proprietary CMS platforms couldn't match. With a massive community building themes and extensions, you could turn a basic site into a store, a portfolio, or a membership hub in a day. Today, WordPress powers over 40% of the internet, proving that an open, community-driven tool can outpace expensive corporate solutions and keep evolving faster. Linux versus Windows Windows Server. While Microsoft spent decades selling licenses for Windows Server, Linux became the go-to choice for web hosting, cloud infrastructure, and supercomputers. Without charging a dime, the reason was simple. Stability, security, and control. Big names like Google, Amazon, and Netflix run huge parts of their infrastructure on Linux because it doesn't lock them into one vendor, and they can tweak every line of the code if needed. In the 2000s, hosting companies realized that uptime was their lifeline, and Linux just crashed less. Even when Microsoft Microsoft had massive marketing budgets and enterprise deals. Linux powered over 90% of the world's top 500 supercomputers. It didn't just compete with Windows Server, it outlasted it in the most critical, high-performance environments. MySQL versus Oracle Database Oracle's database systems are legendary in the enterprise world, but they come with a price tag that can run into millions per year. MySQL, on the other hand, was fast, simple, and open source, making it a natural choice for startups and early internet giants. Facebook, Wikipedia, and YouTube all built their massive platforms on MySQL before they had deep pockets. Its flexibility meant developers could spin up databases in minutes, instead of going through weeks of procurement. When Oracle eventually bought MySQL, many feared it would be killed off, but forks like MariaDB kept the open source spirit alive. Even today, MySQL remains the backbone of countless websites, quietly proving that you don't need enterprise pricing to achieve enterprise scale. PHP versus ASP.NET In the early 2000s, thousands, if you were building a dynamic website, you had two big paths, ASP.NET from Microsoft or PHP, the scrappy, open-source scripting language that could run on almost any server. ASP.NET was powerful, but came with licensing costs, a Windows-only environment, and a steeper learning curve. PHP, on the other hand, was free, ran on cheap shared hosting, and let you upload a few files to a server and have a working site in minutes. That simplicity made it the backbone of the Internet's explosion powering forums, blogs, online shops, and eventually platforms like Facebook and WordPress. While ASP.NET stayed mostly in enterprise environments, PHP became the default choice for millions of small developers and startups. Even today, despite newer frameworks, a huge chunk of the web still runs on PHP, a testament to how open-source accessibility can outlast corporate muscle. Git versus Perforce Before Git, many large companies relied on Perforce for version control. It worked well but was centralized and expensive, with licensing that made it hard for small teams to adopt. Git, created by Linus Torvalds, took a completely different approach. Distributed version control. Every developer had a full copy of the repository, meaning you could work offline, branch instantly, and merge changes without waiting for a server. It was free, fast, and scalable, which made it perfect for both tiny open-source projects and massive corporate code bases. The rise of platforms like GitHub supercharged its adoption, turning Git into the standard for modern software development. Perforce still survives in niche areas like large binary asset management for game studios, but in the broader world of coding, Git completely rewrote the rules, and it didn't cost a dime to use. Done watching? If you like this video, hit subscribe for more cool stuff.